Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are. Welcome once more to another video podcast of PNT Live, exclusively from the PNT Live Network. And remember, if you'd like to check out archives of the PNT Live Network, just make sure you pop on over to pntlive.net. Now today I'm going to share with many of you a rather interesting blog post by one of my favorite adult entertainment industry bloggers, a man known as Luke Ford. Actually, it was Luke Ford who kind of inspired me to continue my own path as an independent investigative journalist or blogger when it comes to the adult entertainment industry because the truth is out there. Sometimes it's suppressed, sometimes it's concealed, but it's out there. And hidden knowledge is a passion of mine to try to share, to try to enlighten the population in regards to. And from my perspective, that's something that Luke Ford has done, which is why I'm probably going to take the time at least once a week to share one of his insightful journal entries or blog posts. Now today, the blog post that I'm going to be sharing, um, I'm not sure when it was written. There doesn't seem to be a date on it, but uh, it does say that there is an update in 1999. So I think initially this post must have been written in the mid 1990s, but it's about an adult actress known as Melissa Hill. Melissa Hill features her own B cup breast and the ability to act her way out of a paper bag. She stands five foot four, weighs 115 pounds, and measures 3B2536. In her 20s, the former ballerina and ballet teacher appears in 130 productions during her three years in porn. She lives in the San Francisco Bay Area where she grew up. Hills never lived anywhere else. Her family, ignorant of her porn work, live nearby. The oldest of three daughters, Melissa developed as a quiet, shy, nerdy kid who liked to read all the time. She retains those characteristics, never talking to strangers and uncomfortable discussing sex. I'm going to interject there. From my perspective, any professional, within the adult entertainment industry who comes across someone who claims that they want to be an adult actress but is uncomfortable discussing sex, which is the job, probably is not right for the job of being an adult actress. And such professionals around such an adult actress or potential adult actress it seems as though it would be their responsibility to deter this actress from moving forward in the industry or to out and out not even book the individual for any jobs within the industry, but I'll continue. In answering my questions about cum shots, blowjobs, and anal sex, which she doesn't do, Melissa frequently used words like weird, awkward and embarrassed. Strangely enough, I do get embarrassed, blush and become awkward. I can't even dirty talk during a scene. It's part of me I can't overcome yet as an actress. That's a quote by Melissa Hill. For two years, Melissa dated Swedish porn director Nick Kramer which didn't necessarily work to her advantage. They limited her participation in his movies, so she won't be dismissed as just the director's girlfriend. She waited around on Nick's sets far longer than other performers who would receive a $40 to $100 kill fee if they weren't used. Compared to other performers, Melissa grew up slowly not dating or having sex until 17 years old. After taking 17 years of ballet, she taught the subject for five years after high school until entering porn. 
Melissa waited until she was 18 to go to her first dance club. She never used a fake ID or tried drugs. She didn't drink until the age of 21. She accompanied her friend, Caitlin Hill, to porn shoots before diving into the industry. She started with amateur sex videos in San Francisco before moving to bigger LA productions. In her first sexual experience with a girl, Melissa did her friend Caitlin, also a lesbian virgin. Video Virgins features lots of nervous giggling between the two. Melissa is heterosexual. She's never been with a girl in private, though she remains open to it. Quote, when I started in porn, I didn't realize you could refuse things or choose who you wanted to work with or choose where you got the pop shot. And so I resent always getting it in the face. I see so many girls say, I won't take it in the face. Since people know I'll take it there, that's where it always goes. Melissa feels disgust for men who use the cum shot to a woman's face as a vicarious revenge on females who've rejected them in the past. Quote, I'm glad that none of my friends feel that way. I would never do anything demeaning. At first, I never wanted to play a hooker. I wanted to show that you can be intelligent, properly dressed, and still be in adult movies. You can think and act. I'm an actress, not a porn star, and certainly not a cunt for hire or sperm receptacle. No one has the right to call us that. I don't like to read the sex magazines like Hustler Erotic Video Guide. They're insulting. Though recently, I saw a piece they did on my friend Gentile, and it was the most pleasant thing they've ever said about anybody. They write for the fantasies of a select group of men. If you give them an interview, they quote you out of context by taking part of a statement to make it appear that you're insulting someone." End quote. Melissa lists her primary reasons for performing in porn as money and the opportunity to act. She wants to go mainstream one day. The San Francisco native eventually wants marriage and children. She hasn't thought about the problems that will arise in her future because of her X-rated past. She lists her best movies as Arrowhead, Apocalypse Climax, The Girl with the Heart-Shaped Tattoo, Dreams of Desires, and Penetrator 2. Quote, I judge them by my acting role, says Melissa. I don't remember my sex scenes. Let's pause there. I don't remember my sex scenes, says an adult actress. That's not healthy. From my perspective, this woman never should have been in the adult entertainment industry. As of current, there is a licensed doctor who has recommended that this woman go into a mental health treatment program. I hope one day she decides to do so because um, if you're willingly cutting out a part of your life that you would be known to the public for, that's not healthy mentally, not at all. And I really wish that somebody would have noticed more so that this girl didn't need to be in the adult entertainment industry. Paul Fishbein calls Melissa the most underrated adult star. Quote, she can act, she can F. Everybody likes her and she looks like the girl next door. More good performances in the last two years, 95 and 96 than anyone, end quote. Okay, so this was written probably around 96 or 97. 
Hill hardened during her years in porn, looking as though she used drugs regularly. Then in 1997, she broke up with Nick Kramer and started getting her life back in order. Patrick Riley writes on the rec.arts.movies.erotica news group on April 24, 1999. Watching Wet Spots number seven from Elegant Angel last night, and who appears but Melissa Hill? Isn't this a step down? Wasn't she a VVW person with a possible future like Julie Ashton? Most of this series is definite raincoater material, although her scene in number seven uses condoms and has no anals, DPs, A2Ms, or spinning. However, the interesting factor from the POV of keeping up with the private lives and breeding, as in producing infants of the porn community, is her body deterioration. Loss of belly muscle tone and her tits have become smaller and flabbier. They probably aren't really smaller, it's just that the rest of her upper body has become fatter. The camera guy asks her about her vacation of 18 months from the industry, but gleans no useful information. He does keep well away from her belly though, and she herself uses every opportunity to lie on her front, only at the end doing RC, where she leans back, which has the effect of tensioning the belly muscles and disguising any flab. So has she produced a rug rat, or is this just fast aging? Hmm. So that's the end of that. Um, this is actually a cautionary tale from my perspective, because just from what Luke Ford wrote, and he's a pretty astute judge of character, um, this was a woman who, from my perspective, maybe didn't have the confidence to attempt mainstream acting, so she um, went into adult entertainment. And to the young women out there who might be watching me, please do not go into the adult entertainment industry because there is no win at all. But especially don't go in if you're not comfortable with discussing the mechanics of sex, if you're not comfortable with sex, if um, it's something that you would be ashamed of your parents finding out about, because once you do it, there's no going back and it will follow you and affect you for the rest of your life. Trust me, I know. So take care everybody. Have a great morning, evening or afternoon. Whatever time it is, wherever you are, thank you for checking out this episode of the PNT Live Network. And remember, you can always check out the archives on pntlive.net. Bye bye.